throughout the years you've been expanding your your interest in acting through through different shows and different films how important was it for you to go from uh, the the uh, Netherlands market into the international market through American series and others yeah well um I, I started out acting in, in Holland and I went to theater school there. Um, and then I, I spent some time in Belgium, which is the same language. Are you Belgian? Or no, no, my father was, my father. Oh yeah, Guy, because Guy is a very yeah. Belgian name. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then, um, well, it just made sense to me. I always had a knack for languages and ac accents. So I thought if I work really hard and try to, you know, get rid of my Dutch accent, maybe I can pretend to be an American or Canadian and, and work over there. So I, I always had that in the back of my head. I was always practicing. But first I went to, to Germany to do theater there with a, a theater director who I really admired. Um, and I learned German for that. And then uh, I thought, well, why not try America? And it was, the start was very easy. For some reason, I got a part very quickly in Manhattan, the show about, um, the making of the atom bomb from from Sam Shaw and Tommy Schlamy directed, and that was just wonderful. And then I thought, well, this is really easy. I don't know what what the fuss is about. Obviously, it's not easy. After that, I've spent many, you know, a lot of time doing auditions and not getting anything, and it's it's really hard work. But I'm how tough how tough is it the audition thing? It's like I'm sure it's super stressful because you're being judged by in, yeah in, right in three lines or. Oh, no, not really three lines. No, more, um, yeah. No, yeah, a bit more. Well, it's just, it's a part, you have to figure out how to make that fun for yourself and, and not be affected, you know, if you, if you don't get something. Obviously, sometimes you're very disappointed if it's something you really wanted to do. Um, but uh, I think if, if you can't deal with that, you probably should find a different profession because there's a lot of rejection in, in, in auditioning, obviously, because you can't play everything, so. But uh, I think what is good in your case is that you, you, your, uh, your profile is, uh, is not only one thing. You can play many characters from many backgrounds, I guess. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because See, that's uh, what how... makes it interesting, right? To, that's why I wanted to be an actor is because you can explore the psyche of many different people and learn something about other people and about other lives and... and like kind of funnel that through yourself and make it into art hopefully um, um yeah. how, how the fact that you had a your your parents are both uh, prominent musicians affected you or impacted you your childhood through taste through love of music through arts or how did it work well i think i was very lucky that my parents were you know are, are musicians I, i just grew up around a lot of beauty There's always beautiful music around, and uh, I feel extremely fortunate for that. Um, and I guess I, I always saw a life where, you know, music is a universal language. There are no borders for music. You can, you can play with somebody, you know, from Japan, and you, can't, you don't speak Japanese, but you're communicating in a very intimate way when you make chamber music. Or So I, always, I was always... Uh, you know, I admired that kind of language. And I thought, well, as, as an actor, you do need words and you do need to understand each other. You know, I don't have a violin. I cannot communicate that way, unfortunately. But so I thought it's very important for an actor to be good at languages. So I just tried to learn as many languages as I could so that I could communicate with as many people um, through acting. Uh, and I always saw my parents travel a lot for work you know it was never just in Holland um, they, they I went with my mom and my stepfather to the United States very often and yeah so it's just very inspiring very very lucky childhood in that way that's very nice when I read that I thought oh how fun how nice yeah. you, you yeah, know it's, it's good <laughs> um, let me ask you when it comes to when it comes to choose your roles Yep. Now that you're in a more comfortable position, I think you just you you have just uh, finished or uh, or you no not just but you finish the columnist, which is I think is a great story. What was the attraction to that movie? And by the way, thank you for giving us some time because I know you're very busy with a TV show as well. Oh yeah, well thank you. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, well, uh, the columnist, I I 
I just was very drawn to how crazy this character was. It's very fun for me whenever somebody's, you know, quite extreme. That's a challenge to get that to be both um, believable yet absurd. Um, I like that the character, um, the script seemed to allow for a sense of humor within, you know, the, 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 the morbid tale of it all. I like the director and I like to go home sometimes and, and be in Holland and act in my, in my mother tongue. It was very easy for me. <laughs> so, also, um, it, 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 uh, it touches a, a topic that is very uh, upsetting in a way. Oh yeah. Harassment, harassment, harassment in the, towards women or people who, who, I don't know, there's groups of, groups of uh, crazy, crazy, Yeah. People in the could you talk about it's, it's also a story of revenge and, and getting your power back, right? Yeah. This character is not a victim. No, she is crazy, but she's not a victim. <laughs> no, I, 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 I agree with you. It's a very timely subject. We see a lot of online harassment. Um, uh, and it seems like you can, you know, you can write terrible things and you just click enter and it's it's there, and the person who reads it um it has a huge effect on them uh, and i think it's just kind of a um a dark absurd fairy tale you know about taking the re response to these threats to the extreme and um and i think also you know because of covid and so many people have been at home with their screens and that's their lifeline maybe maybe it's gotten even worse that kind of behavior i know that i have i've You know, I don't read everything people send me, but sometimes I see something and sometimes it's it's awful. Often it's nice, but sometimes it's awful and I can make you feel a bit scared or so. Um, I liked it for that. I thought I thought it was interesting. You know, sometimes on, I go into Twitter and I can't believe the, the things that people can say against other groups or other people who are different. It's very I get scared. I, I feel like I don't want to be part of this. And it's depressing a little, right? It's very depressing. <laughs> I agree. I agree. When, when it comes to uh, evil, let's say the show. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about it? And I want to know: it's a successful show, and do you get excited when they renew seasons, or you're too cool to? And you no, just move on. No, I'm not too cool. And you're super cool. <laughs> no, I'm not cool at all. No, no, no. I am very excited. I was very excited when they renewed it. I've, I feel very lucky in, with this job. Robert and Michelle King, who, who write it, are very intelligent and, and warm people. And um, I think part of how, how, I, uh, how I choose whatever job, you know, choose sounds so like I have like a thousand jobs to choose from. That's not, that's not true. But the jobs that do come to me, I do think about who do I want to spend time with these people, you know, because that's your life in the end. It's like, so I'm very lucky to get to spend time with, with Robert and Michelle King and the other people of the cast. We just have a very uh, wonderful dynamic. And, um, and I think my character is, is, is really interesting. And the second season that we're filming right now, she becomes even more interesting and layered. And, um, and the story is also very timely. Unfortunately, there's a lot of inspiration for evil stories to tell, you know? From reality, for yes. we're going crazy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> How much time do we have? Because I don't want to step um, on your... I, no, no, I'm good. I'm good for... I, I can go until 10.25. Great. That's awesome. Okay, tell me. Um, how important is it for you to... No, first of all, I want to know if you bring the character home when you're doing a TV show, a series, because it's very intense. And as you said, you're with these other people and they become family. Do you bring the character home or you leave it there? Or you're always on character? Uh, no, 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 no. No, I think, you know, sometimes when I play somebody who, like, for instance, when I did The Columnist, she was... Uh, she was in a very bad mood, obviously, and, and, and she was very troubled. So I think then when I was on set and, you know, you go through makeup and, and hair, I had to sort of stay a little bit in, in that moodiness to, um, to be able to play it. And, but when I play somebody who's, you know, very outward, 
my energy will be a bit more outward, etc. At what level do you have to identify with the characters to develop a good, what you would consider a good performance? For example, for evil, what do you did you have to do, or how does it work, or you just going to make up and it comes to you, or not? <laughs> Well, no, I have to sit with the material and like and and have, meditate on it a little bit, but I don't have to be the character or feel like the character that much. I just have to, um, I don't know. I always find it hard to talk about process because I work very much on intuition. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't really have a set, you know, I, I don't read 17 books and watch 14 films about a subject. I just try yeah. to connect with it emotionally and try to use parts of myself make some parts really big, some parts really small. I don't know, it's hard to talk about acting. For, from all, uh, from all uh, you also started doing theater. Was that something that really got into you? Like, you, oh my God, I had experienced this, the people, the public is right there, it's so warm. And yeah. I'm sure I it's mean, very I, satisfying, no? Maybe. Uh, yes, it's, 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 a, it's different. Um, and the, the, the hard thing about theater is like you have to do it so many times, you know, so you have to try to keep it real every night. And that, that's a bit of the struggle. Um, but um, uh, it's very nice to have that direct interaction with, with people and to pitch your performance to feel if, you know, are they still there or not? You have a very immediate response. And you're also the editor of your own story with film. I think an actor is maybe only 30% of it because there's a director and there's a, somebody who will edit it. So you, you're not in charge of your own story as much as you are in the theater. Um, maybe it's less stressful, maybe, because it can be edited, as you said, maybe. I don't no, know. but I, I find as editing actually quite stressful because you can also ruin a performance in the edit. You know, <laughs> at least I feel like I have control in the theater. I know like, oh, okay, that was not a good performance. I know this, or this was good. And, and with, with film, it sometimes feels like, oh, I hope they don't, you know, make they, it too, yeah. that can happen with people who, who think differently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if your approach is different. It, yeah. And uh, are you uh, thinking of like uh, like your dreams as an actor? Have you accomplished them, or oh, the dreams are uh, always going on? Uh, well, I, yeah, I don't. Well, I would just love to uh, continue to get have good work and challenging projects, and um, but I'm 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 happy that that I uh, I'm happy with all the things that I've been allowed to do. Um, I hope to have a long, a long career. <laughs> I hope to be able to get really old in this business, you know. Good and, and play grandma, grandma in the yes, many and years like from now. Francis McDormand, somebody who's just very real and powerful. You want an Oscar too? I do too. You want an Oscar, <laughs> right? That's not what I mean, but I'm, I'm more mean like somebody. I'm kidding. Who, I'm kidding. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, it's great. Uh, let me. My last question. I want to know if, if when you choose a role, because many of the the work you've done has a is very meaningful. Do you look for things that have a meaning, a social impact, or an impact in the people who watch the the show or the film or the TV series? Yeah. I mean, I think it's more interesting that way. So if, if, if something like that comes across, I, I, I'm happy. I'm, I'm also, you know, I've done, I think different things can have meaning, not only a timely piece like The Columnist or Evil, but I think, you know, a beautiful romantic film about two people missing or meeting each other can, can also have meaning because that's timeless, right? Um, those also like, moving, moving emotions is beautiful. Yes. Yeah, so, so anything that, that I can feel a heartbeat in the script or, and that connects to, that I can find a place to put uh, in my psyche and in my body, I'm, I'm interested in doing. And then I, 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 I hope that the taste of the director and my taste aligns and that, you know, you can inspire each other and, and, and make something. When it, sorry, Katya, no. when it comes to a series, which is like being part of a movie for many, many months, uh, if you compare it with a movie which is done in less time, uh, do you 
feel that you can develop whatever your character needs uh, on a more uh, careful, I don't know if careful is the way, but on a more, uh, I mean, uh, I don't know, that you don't have to rush through it. Well, yes, but that's, I'm still trying to figure that out because I've never done such a long series, but I think the way that Robert and Michelle write my character, which is why I think it's such a, it's such a good show. You know, some shows, a character is always the same and people watch it because they understand, oh, here we go. Oh, I love this. She always will respond the same. And it's kind of a comfort for the audience, you know, like, I don't know, something like Friends, for instance, a very good show. And those people always respond in the same way or Seinfeld or sure or 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 maybe I don't watch those shows, but uh, any kind of procedural show where, you know, oh, this is how they how they do it. And you like to watch it because it's familiar. I think with evil, it's not familiar because I think the the, the character constantly develops and changes and is challenged. And so um, I am allowed to, to change her through the material. And so it's, it's very, that's a very rewarding experience because as an actor, I still have, I have to, I have to come up with new things constantly, you know, it's not just a set character. How, how important is it for you to play? I mean, you just play someone very out there in the columnist, but how important is it to play real people, not people that are always heroic or always, but, but people who are like we all are, we can be wonderful one day and yeah. we can be imbeciles or cruel. Yeah. Well, like for instance, the columnist, I think she, she's probably a very boring, normal person until <laughs> this, ha this happens, right? <laughs> and so we only see this snap moment, but I think before this, her life was just really average. She's just a suburban mom and a mediocre writer and just, and then she, and then something snaps which I think can happen to maybe anyone. I, I don't know. Maybe not to ex the extent that, you know, she goes on a murder spree, but I, I, I like, I like all kinds of stories. I also like stories that, that kind of just are, and, and uh, you get to spend some time with some people and, and nothing too extreme happens, but there's a, there's a beauty there or a connection or some poetry there. I, don't I know. totally agree. There are yeah. films that, or series that are just beauty and, and yeah. you're with them. You're with them and you're feeling with them. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. me too. 